It's March Madness time once again, and TV19 Sports has your local sports tournament coverage every step of the way. Welcome to Sports Path. I'm Tim Peterson, and she's Zach. You're Jamie Dustin. I am Jamie <laughs> Dustin. Thank you so much. Today on Sports Path, we have a major coaching change to announce. Not one, but two special awards were given to one of our Fab Five athletes, and Zach Halverson joins us live from the XL Energy Center to fill us in on the boys' high school hockey tournament. Hey, Zach, what's going on? Jamie, it is the biggest high school sporting event in the nation. The Minnesota State High School League Boys Hockey Tournament welcomes hundreds of thousands of fans each year, but only 16 teams get to play in front of them. One of our Fab Five teams, the Hill Mary Pioneers, have a major, huge game tomorrow against the Maple Grove Crimson. We'll preview that game and talk more about the tournament coming up later in the show. Back to you guys. Well, it sounds like fun down there, Zach. We'll move on here in Class 1A, the number three seeded Matamidae Zephyrs. Welcomed a new rival to their section as the number two seeded Totino Grace was added to the list along with number one seeded St. Thomas Academy Ooh. of the teams they would need to beat. The Zephyrs met the Eagles in the section 4A semifinals on Tuesday, February 28th. Section hockey action between Totino Grace and Mato Midai complete that task. Mato Midai regains possession, they'll break it out. Nice pass, threads the needle, coming in, a shot and a goal! Nicely done, a nice pass right on the stick of Nick Nelson who buries it. Pass made it through the defenseman, just couldn't get any wood on it and it gets right through. And the Zephyr's on top early, here's a good chance for the Eagles and they score! Andrew McDonald takes it in and dekes out Sawyer Marshall and we're even up at one. The offense, here they come, pass too far, taken away. Brought into the zone, Mazenga gives it off, gives it back and a goal, Mazenga. Well, pretty little give and go there. Leads to Mazenga, lighting the lamp. Still in the zone, centering pass, backhand, save, puck loose, and it goes over the line into the net as Marshall just couldn't hang on to it. Gets it right back. Goes into the slot, takes a shot, and another shot, scores! Luke Mazenga, puck came right to him, and he gets his second goal of the evening. The ref's been hit a few times this evening by pucks. Oh, left, right, and front, and a goal! Well, Rue got a gift there, came right to his stick, and he just wrapped it right around Marshall. And the third goal of the period makes it five to one. It was a great Point. game by both teams. It's Totina Grace Eagles, uh, you know, a team that had a fantastic season, rivaled St. Thomas Academy for number one seed in this section. And uh, they will go ahead and play number one and number two seed this Friday here at Aldridge Arena. And well, Jamie, we'll take a look at the bracket and how it laid out here. It's a section 4A, the final bracket. And uh, Matamidai losing that game to Totino Grace, and that's a good Totino Grace team. They ended up Totino Grace getting St. Thomas Academy in that championship game. St. Thomas Academy and Totino Grace, I was at that game, and it was, went to overtime, tied at one. It was a phenomenal game. Both teams very evenly matched. St. Thomas gets the victory, and they actually moved on to the state tournament, and they won actually already today. They won this morning in the state tournament. So congratulations to them, and uh, nice job. Yeah. North St. Paul came in as a six seed after a good season, and that would knock off the three seed Roseville Raiders in the first round of playoffs at Aldrich Arena back on February 25th. Good afternoon and welcome to Aldrich Arena for the Section 4 AA quarterfinals. Today it is the 15 and 10 North St. Paul Polars from the Classic Suburban Conference against the 15, 8 and 2 Roseville Raiders from the Suburban East. At the blue line, shot by Otis, pad save, rebound and a goal! Justin Oliver is 23rd hole of the season. As you see, the initial shot comes in and the rebound goes right to Oliver. As North St. Paul getting the first goal of the game and they will now have two minutes, 44 seconds uh, left for a power play to start off the third period. Right. Now in the circle, wrist shot saved by Larson. High sticking, the goal will be waved off. As we take another look at this, initial shot, puck flutters up in the air, there's contact. It's about, boy, about mid-arm, maybe elbow level of goaltender. Uh, but the puck went straight up into the air behind the net. Centering pass, shot put on, and a goal! 
nothing Polars here with 8.03 left to go in the third. Defensemen get caught looking at the puck rather than the responsibilities in front. And who's alone in front? That's Jimmy Carroll. Jim, yep, take a look at, there's a wrap around. Yeah, look like that left hand kind of got behind and. Wrap around, it's loose in front. Manifeld dives for it. He's there at the side of the net and a goal! Two to one. As we take a look at the replay, McCann comes around and comes through the paint area to the other side. And that is Bartell on the far side post off the goaltender's yeah. left leg and he actually kicks it back into the goal. Along the far boards. Turnaround shot, sticked away by Manifeld. Shop it on, save, oh! rebound, and the goal! Oh! Roseville ties it, two apiece. Manifeld is fit to be tied. Uh, the officials are going to confer, but it certainly looks like they're going to call it a game-tying goal for the Raiders. The shot was initially behind the net and Mantefeld just never really had it yep. against that right arm, kind of armpit area, trying to pin it against his body, but it rolls off and into the back of the net, and Roseville has tied it up. Here comes McCann once again with the speed. How about the other side? McCann taken down. is taken down. He falls into the boards behind the net. We will have a penalty. Back to the point for Colvard. Over for Andrew Colvard. Shot in the goal! Roseville in the second overtime will advance to the section semifinals and take on the Johnson Governors. Again, Eric Manifeld with an excellent game between the pipes for North St. Paul. He had stopped 32 of 34 going into the second overtime, and Roseville with five great scoring chances uh, just in that first uh, minute and a half plus of the second overtime. Yeah, Roseville just continued to put on the pressure, put on the pressure. It started off, that was a regular even strength goal right there, the game winner, but uh, this second overtime started off with them being on the power play and they continued that momentum into five on five play, capped off with an excellent game winner. And now Roseville season continues and North St. Paul finishes up with a record of 15 and 11. The Hill Murray Pioneers were predicted by many to face the White Bear Lake Bears in the Section 4 AA Final, as they do most years. But after arguably the greatest upset and comeback in the section's history in which the St. Paul Johnson Governors came back from a 5-1 deficit in the third period and beat the Bears in overtime, the number one seeded Pioneers looked like the overall favorite to come out of the section. But the game cliche, one game at a time, came into effect as they would have well, they would have to beat Stillwater in the semifinals for a chance to play for the section championship. Welcome to the Coliseum. I'm Tim Peterson along with Zach Alverson in tonight's big hockey matchup in 4 AA in this section is Hill Murray versus the Stillwater Ponies and Zach tonight's game looks to be a, like a real good one. Uh, you know, they can easily win this game. Brown backs it out to Getzel. Getzel to the far side. One time shot to go. like that, right, Blake Heinrich has started the scoring for the Pioneers. They now lead 1-0, scoring on the power play. Faust circling around, he'll come through center, over the line, carries it in, goes to the backhand, slides it in front of the goal! And Andy, Andy Faust isn't gonna do anything special. He's just gonna pass it out in front. It looked like it went out the skates of Josh Clark. This is free, Samper had it, now it's picked up, and walking in with the shot, and a goal! Andy Faust strikes again! Not something you want to see if you're a Stillwater fan. Hill Murray playing a very, very solid game. They got shits, or six shots this, for the second period for a total of 21. And uh, the Stillwater Ponies with seven shots for a total of 13. Still all Hill Murray so far here in this game. Heinrich, he'll carry it in. He'll look to shoot. He shoots, he scores! Blake Heinrich with the goal, and then he gives the quiet sign to the Stillwater fans. 
Zach Halverson here with on TV19 Sports with Andy Faust and Blake Heinrich. They just uh, won the semifinal game against Stillwater Ponies 4 to nothing. Here with Andy Faust. Faust, you got a couple goals tonight. First one, not so proud about the second one. That was pretty nice. Uh, yeah, it was a great play by my line mates to get me the puck, and I just looked for the open net and shot it. You know, uh, you're facing Phil Housley and Stillwater Ponies. They're a great team. What was it like uh, taking on uh, Blake Cates tonight? He was a Look pretty strong in there. Yeah, he's obviously one of the best senior goalies in the state. He's really big, got really good hands, and it was tough to get that first one by him, I think. He's a really good goalie. In a high-pressure situation here at the Coliseum, describe what that feeling is like coming out of the tunnel the first time. Uh, yeah, you know, we got a lot of young guys, so I think they're a little bit nervous that first period, but once we uh, calmed down in the second, we put a couple past the goalie. I think we, uh, we settled down a little bit. All right, well, thank you a lot. Thanks a lot, Andy. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Bring in Blake Heinrich. Blake, uh, your defenseman, your very po strong and powerful defenseman on the Hill Murray Pioneers side. You got a couple goals tonight, a yeah. couple of really nice ones. What was it like going top shelf? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never done that before. I'm not, I'm not known as a goal scorer, but it's kind of nice to get a couple under my belt. You know, you, the physical play out there, you know, got uh, more and more as the game went on. Was there any worry, you know, especially once it was 4 nothing, that, you know, got, getting chippy, any injuries, was there any worry about that? Yeah, I, I kind of calmed down on the hitting part <laughs> since we got up. Uh, can't be disrespectful once you get such a big lead like that, but it was nice to get that win. You got a big uh, game this Friday coming up, the state or uh, the section championship game. Any uh, special preparations involved? Um, I think we just got to take the body, get on him early. Get, that first goal is huge. I think if we get the first, I think we'll be all right. All right, well, congratulations, Thank Blake. You. Blake Heinrich and the Hill Murray Pioneers going to play the winner of Roseville and uh, St. Paul Johnson right here at the State Fair Coliseum on Friday. After Roseville defeated the St. Paul Johnson Governors later that evening, the Section 4 AA Championship game was set. The Roseville Raiders and the Hill Murray Pioneers faced off at the Lee and Rose Warner Coliseum on March 2nd for a ticket to the state tournament. Section 4 AA Championship between the 17, 8, and 2 Roseville Raiders and the number one seed, the 21 and 6 Hill Murray Pioneers. Hill Murray has only lost two games since Christmas of 2011 as the Pioneers have been on quite a roll here this year. Becker um, over to Heinrich. Shep it on and Knight squeaks in. The pads of Larson and he figured uh, Hill Murray was going to score, score sooner rather than later and uh, wasn't one of the better chances but uh, there was certainly a good screen set up in front of Larson. And Heinrich's a good shooter. Puts a good hard shot down low. This wraps around all the way to the near faceoff circle. Nice lead pass there, connects for Knowlton. Knowlton, lead pass for Stouts. Back and shot the goal! Boy, that was a nice play. Knowlton really set that up nicely, bringing the puck in across the blue line and then feeding it across the ice. Yeah, you'll see a really good uh, replay here from our handheld camera as uh, Stouts with a beautiful lead pass by Cole Knowlton. Makes it 1-1 here late in the first period. We've seen him face off here for the section. Rick. Nice cross-ice pass. Shep it on, whoa! Conrad Samper sent a pass <laughs> right across the slot to his cousin, Charlie Samper, who was cutting in at full speed. He just deflected it right past Larson. He had no chance. Larson's out to play the shooter there. Here's Conrad firing a hard shot down low, or pass down low, and there's Charlie right there on the edge of the crease to tip it in. What a Total shots, 26-15 after two periods. Played by Campbell at the last second. Now the goal line, center oh, pass, that's a shot the goal. goal! Laval made a nice centering pass to, right out front. And Gensel, Gensel passes it to Laval. Laval coming in towards the net, passes it back to Gensel, and he just puts a quick shot, short side, up high. Beat the glove of Larson. McCann in front of the net, Bartell, shot in the goal! The, the defender was there for Hill Murray, he dove, but he was still able to get it over him. Yeah, it was, he was able to pick up that puck in deep. Watch, McCann's gonna send the puck across here, and I think it's Bartell that's down low. Mm -hmm. Picks up that puck down low. 
Puts a nice shot up high. The defender was diving over, but didn't get there in time. And this comes in on net, steered away. And Hill Murray will advance to the state boys high school hockey tournament. What a game. It was a very good game. Nothing for uh, Roseville to hang their heads about. They gave it a great effort. They just came up one goal short. Well, the Section 4 AA bracket now looks like this after that win by Hill Murray and that beating Roseville in that championship game. You see Roseville came through the bottom there and Hill Murray through the top half. Getting the, that championship game after victory like we showed over Stillwater and then Roseville, so congratulations to them. Well, we welcome back Zach Halverson live from the XL Energy Center. And Zach, what's going on down there? Well, you know, the, we're, we're talking about this quarterfinal game tomorrow morning. The Hill Murray Pioneers and the Maple Grove Crimson. It's going to be a very, very fast, very physical game. The, Pi the Maple Grove Crimson are coming off a major, major win over the Blaine Bengals. They beat them 15 to 1 in the Section 5 AA final. It is their first state tournament appearance. The Pioneers have a lot of of depth and their defense who only returned one member last year from last year's team is uh, actually doing very well they had a sensational section playoffs their only returner blank heinrich netted two goals in the semifinals and put one in the championship game in a relatively low scoring game against roseville in which they won three to two um, uh, the crimson and maple grove have one of the if not the best goaltenders in the state kyle coop Sports a 20 or a 92% save percentage in 28 games, and their offense, the offense of the Crimson, is very, very spread out. As Dylan Steeman, who is the leader in points, is 66. Uh, well, if you look at the fourth and fifth uh, place leaders on the Crimson, they are tied with 46. So the depth on the Maple Grove Crimson offense is very solid, but they've got a lot of work to do with the defense of Hill Murray, and will definitely test the Hill Murray Pioneers. The Crimson and the Pioneers face off at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning here at the XL Energy Center. It should be a blast. Hoping for a big crowd here, hopefully bigger than uh, maybe last year, and hopefully sell out this place for that morning session here at the X. For now, uh, back to you guys. Well, Zach, a couple quick questions here before we let you go. Sure. In that section with where Maple Grove came out of, it seemed like they kind of destroyed everybody. They pounded Blaine. They scored over 15 goals twice. Uh, do you know much about that team? Well, you know, Maple Grove Crimson have been the t one of the top teams, I'll say. They won the Turkey Trot uh, tournament in the, the West Metro with, you know, great teams like Wyzetta, and they've really kind of progressed. You know, last year they were a really good team. They were supposed to make it to the state tournament last year, but they got upset by Blaine and uh, really haven't had the best uh, athletics in the past uh, year or so because they've been had great teams, but they, for some reason, in the, the last part, they choked. And uh, they didn't choke. They, you know, obviously beat them 15 to one. You know, it will be a test, though. You know, this team has zero state tournament appearance, and you know, usually want uh, some history, some uh, experience in this tournament. So it'll be their first test here. We'll see how they handle it. Pioneers have a great opportunity here because they they have experience. Bill Lightner has been here many times before. Hope, we hope, if you're a Hill Murray fan, hope to see the Hill Murray Pioneers maybe outwit the Crimson here, maybe use uh, their mental edge coming into this game and maybe pull out what is on paper an upset. And with that said, Zach, what do you think the, what would your prediction be for the games? Uh, for, well, I, I would, I, you know, I have to pick, because of the dominance on this Maple Grove roster, the, the depth, I would say Maple Grove will beat Hill Murray in the second game, or on the other games, I have Duluth East in the quarterfinal, very solid team. I have uh, actually Egan, beating Moorhead, and I have Benilde beating Edina. So, you know, and this tournament has a bunch of number one seeds coming into this uh, this tournament. Benilde, the only exception. So you not only do you have uh, seven number one seeds in Benilde, but you also have the Cinderella story of Benilde. So it should be probably one of the best tournaments on, it is one of the best tournaments on paper. Hopefully it plays out tomorrow and then over the next few days. Class A, by the way, uh, St. Thomas Academy beat, beat, uh, beat uh, this or was or actually got a win this morning, seven nothing, and so did Breck. So, looks like it's going to be a sweep on the top teams uh, in the Class A. But uh, right now we're looking, of course, at the Class AA tomorrow as the Hill Murray Pioneers will hope to maybe get a repeat of 2008. 
All right, thanks, Zach. Hill Murray Pioneers girls hockey star Hannah Brandt was honored with two prestigious awards last week with the state leading scoring totals of 59 go goals and 31 assists in 26 games. Brandt was selected as the 2012 Miss Hockey Award winner at the Miss Hockey Awards banquet last week. She was also honored as the Associated Press Player of the Year. She plans to attend the University of Minnesota next year. On March 3rd, Hill Murray took on South St. Paul in girls section 4 3A basketball. The Pioneers were the number two seed, while the Packers came in as the number three seed. We'll tip off. This game took place down at Washington Middle School and see what happens there. Washington Middle School here on the north side of St. Paul as we have a section four AAA semifinal between the South St. Paul Packers and the Hill Murray Pioneers. Hill Murray in the home green with black and white trim. South St. Paul in the road white with maroon and black trim. We are set. Jesse Stanga, Blair Reynolds set to bring you the first semifinal of two. Underway here at Washington. Garibay. Got it! Three ball! Timeout, Hill Murray. Loose ball underneath. Shot is good. Her career. CG for three. Got it! Right. Well, when you're a star player, you're going to get those calls. Here's Van Dyke down low. She gets it to go. CG from the elbow. Got it. Christian kicks it out. Peterson, got it for three. She'll go right in and got it. Back out to Michaela for three, good look. Got it. Pass underneath Sethry. Great play, great pass, great finish. Cici, got it, why not, a three ball. It was a couple moments ago, watch this. Watch how her legs get contorted. She hit that and almost tore her ACL. 39-28, Hill Murray leading at halftime. Christian going in for Meyer. Meyer is there. Someone's got to get a body on her. Cici looks hurt. Loose ball. Cici all alone. Cherry picker. 25 for her. She almost got her fifth. Doolittle with an easy bucket on the transition. Goes in all by herself. Too much. Cici all alone, that's easy. Chin long pass. Garibay long three. Got it! Uh. Stolen Sethry. Here she comes. She goes up. She got it! Huge box. Lead hit. cut to four. This game means a lot to the seniors. McKenzie pulls up. Got it! Timeout, South St. Paul, three-point lead for Hill Murray with 90 seconds to go on the clock. Under 10. Oh! Foul for three! Are you kidding me? Foul for three, three shots coming up. We've been talking about all season, the fundamentals. No day. Fires it up for three. Missed it. That'll do it. Hill Murray, 52-48. They hold on to beat South St. Paul and advance to the section championship game where they'll take either Simley or Highland Park on next week. South St. Paul season ends, but they fought to the very end. Jesse that was a great game. Now we got the basketball brackets here for you. Let's take a look at them. We'll start off with 4-3A. and you look at that top half. Simley getting knocked off there. So you get a, a number four seed going against the number two seed in Hill Murray. So Hill Murray kind of looking like they could get to the state in basketball for the girls as well there. <laughs> uh, that'll be taking place once again at Washington Middle School on Rice, I believe. We'll take a look at 4-4A four, four bracket. You see White Bear Lake coming through the top, beating a tough Woodbury team, just getting past them. And then Tartan losing to Central and Takendra Albert and the Tartan Titans season is over. But Takendra, I believe she ended up leading at least the metro area in scoring and also Kind of going back a little bit, Tessa Sitchi up in that scoring leader. So a lot of our teams featuring some of the best players in the state. And that's probably why we've seen Pam Borton a few times this season out at our game. So a lot of fun. By the way, that game's taken over at East Ridge High School, which is out in Woodbury. Yep. We'll move over to the boys' side now. And there is a 4-3A boys. 
their bracket recent re recently released and Hill Murray in the bottom half of that bracket. And uh, looks to be a tough bracket uh, up, up through and that, that, that'll take place on the 9th with the finals games coming at Washington. So that's 4-3A and we'll switch it over to 4-4A for White Bear Lake, Matamidi, Tartan, most of our teams are in this one. And uh, Roseville, a top seeded team overall, looks to be boy the, the big the big raider in that uh, bracket, the big the big big cheese, if you will. <laughs> so Matamidi, even if if Matamidi gets the victory there, they're going to have a tough game, and hopefully we'll, we'll be out and get some footage of that game. That'll be uh, if Matamidi makes it against Roseville. Moving on. Well, the White Bear Lake boys wrestling team recently competed in the state tournament down at the Excel Center after losing their first round matchup to Prior Lake. They would bounce back and beat Wilmer 31 to 30, then would win, win the consolation bracket with a 36-27 victory over Little Falls. Tommy Longendike and Bo Bebo were each named to the 3A All Tournament team. And we'll take a look at the bracket here and how they got there. Boy, that Apple Valley team, just a power horse. And they've been there for the last 20 years, and they're there again. But White Bear Lake ended up winning the consolation. As there, there it is, and I already said the score. So just looking for your viewing pleasure there of seeing White Bear Lake being a winner. <laughs> well, moving over to the Tartan Titans, sophomore T.J. O'Hara became the first student in Tartan history to bring home a state wrestling title. O'Hara won the 3A 152-pound title to become Tartan's first individual state wrestling champion. Nice Hill job. Hill Murray football head coach Brooke Bollinger has accepted a new assistant coaching position at the University of Pittsburgh and has left the Pioneers football squad after just one season. Bollinger led the Pioneers to the state class 4A semifinals before losing a heartbreaker to the eventual state champions, Ricori. No word yet on the replacement head coach. Julia Stedman made North St. Paul gymnastics history on Saturday, February 25th at the University of Minnesota Sports Pavilion. She became the first ever polar to win an all-around title. North St. Paul's Spencer White placed eighth in the 50 free event at the Minnesota State Swimming and Diving Meet with a time of 21.72 seconds, achieving a new school record and earning an all-state title as well. Well, a happy birthday goes out to a couple of special people. First, it's Maya Langraff. She turns 12 today. Happy birthday, Maya. And also, Zach Kingsley, who is a member of our crew, has been here for a while. Here at TV19, he's now 22. We'll bring Zach Halverson back into the mix. Yeah, thanks, guys. And we'd like to thank a couple of uh, great people. Uh, first of all, Nathan Hart and Mike Simons. They were the technical guys behind this whole production. We thank them so much. Also to CTV and Town Square Television for providing us, or providing us highlights. Uh, some of them those that you saw today. Uh, thanks a lot to them. And uh, also a big thank you to the Overtime Sports Network for allowing us to use their internet feed to make this live shot happen. And thank you, Zach, for being down there and yeah. having a good time. Yes. Watching a lot of hockey. Well, I'm Tim Peterson. I'm Jamie Dustin. And, and that's, that's your, your Sports, sports Path. path.